can find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies. She is blessed and praised. Hey guys, God bless. Welcome back to Twist and Shout. And of course, I am Shar. And today is our first video for, I guess, our woman to woman talk is what we decided on. So woman to woman, I'm just going to give you scriptures and things that will help you be a holy, acceptable woman in God's sight. And you may say that's been done before, this, that, ever. Listen, listen, I can't fight what God gave me. Like I've been trying to say, I want to do this. I want to do that. But from the time I was a kid to now, and I'm 30 years old, I'll be 31 next month. Things have changed. And we're in this feminist movement, Black Lives Matter movement. We're in all these things that do not give God glory and actually denounce what God was trying to give us. So let me just remind you guys of some things um, that God gave me. And I, you know what, because my husband's preaching on this this Sunday. And I'm okay. I was like, cool, I'm just going to take your scripture. But God said, no. I need you to start from the beginning because a lot of people have a lot of um, misconceptions about the word of God and what happened, who did what. And I'm just going to show you guys why there is such turmoil between man and woman and where it all began. So if you would turn with me to Genesis chapter three and... I'm going to read the story to you and then, well, I don't know, because that may take a while, right? Well, I'll try to read fast. This is chapter three, because you have to get the whole picture. And I'm not a fan of, you know, not getting the whole matter. So I'm bringing it in so you can read it. Bring it a little bit more. There you go. All right. This is Genesis chapter three. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you would die. You would not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized they were naked. So they sewed, sewed, I'm sorry, fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. All right, let's recap right quick. Because my husband and I was talking about this and this came to us and it had been the Holy Spirit because we have read the scripture a thousand and one times and we never looked at it this way. Let's look at what happened. The serpent was crafty. He was smart. He was intelligent. He was Cunning, he was everything that you need to deceive someone. He was doing what he does best, which is sinning. And he sinned from the time he up appeared to the time he left. And I'll tell you why. Because you may say, well, he didn't, he got to say something first. No. Who did he go to first? He went to the woman. Why did he go to the woman? Because he was already setting up to disobey God's will. This is why. God had to make it clear and plain later on with the fall of man. Like, look, I made the man first. The man is the head. But Satan within the serpent was being disobedient to God's will and his order by going to the woman first. Why did he choose the woman? You may say, and a lot of us don't want to hear this, but think about when we go shopping and when we, go into convenience stores and stuff and we're looking at clothing and stuff. All they had to tell us is what something's on sale. And we immediately jump to the conclusion that this is a great deal because it's on sale. But some of us are a little, you know, harder to please than others. But I know for me, 
All it takes for you to say is 20% off, 30% off. And I'm just like, oh, great. I should have that. But in reality, it could be like a just an additional pair of shoes to your collection. Did you really need that? He knew him being cunning, him knowing that woman is weaker in desire than man. You may say, wait a minute, hold on. But listen, there's a whole lot of desires out there, not just sexual. But when you think about a man and a woman, more than likely, more commonly, we are more persuasive to buy things than men are. That's our character. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just how God made us, which is why we need a man. And then he questioned her. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in his garden? Trick question, right? Because we know Adam knew that he didn't say don't eat from any tree. He was particular. But here's the trick question. Did God really say that? The woman, of course, being a woman, she's going to answer and she's going to try to correct. What's the problem that we have now in today's world? The woman trying to correct the man or trying to be over the man or thinking that she knows something that man don't. We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you would die. Satan comes with more knowledge and understanding because he was able to, or he was open up to God's will based on what he's saying. He said, you're not going to die. So he knew what would, what would happen, what would not would happen, which further it concludes that God knew all of this was going to happen. And he used Satan for his will. You will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So, Here's something that's misteach too. You'll hear people use that part and say that because of the fallen man, we are like gods and we are many gods because we are made in his image that we have this power and we have this understanding. Big misconception. Why? Because there's only one all powerful, one all knowing. And the idea of being Christ like, not God like, Christ like is to be kind, loving, and have the fruits of the spirits. Again, you will hear that time and time again. I heard it so much and it's ridiculous. That's not what this means and that's not how we should use that scripture. We are not to even imagine being like God. To me, that is sinful in nature because we are boasting edifying of ourselves. If we are God-like, why would we need God? When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She was gaining. She saw the gain of eating his fruit and Satan knew that. Just like with temptation today, we know that Satan is not just going to send you a man that isn't your type and you aren't attracted to. He's going to send a man that you actually find interesting and that actually catches your eye. And then before you know it, you have fallen because he was desirable to your eyes, just like this fruit was. And that you could gain wisdom. Now, this is the crazy part, right? Because there was no conversation about wisdom before this point, right? Like, oh, you're going to know that between good and evil. Born in sin and shape iniquity, right? Our flesh already desire or had a desire to know good and evil and to know things and things, whether it be good for us or harmful for us. Think about an infant or a baby, like when they're born. And all they want to do is touch stuff and put stuff in their mouth. Curious. They want to know things. They want to see how it tastes, how it feels. Curiosity. Curiosity has been in our flesh since the beginning, as you can see. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband. Here, once again, we have an out of order action. Eve, already out of order, based on the influence of the serpent, to take part in something that God had already talked to Adam about. So they're being disobedient and they're acting outside of God's will. She is leading the man on to do something that was already established to be bad. Uh, where am I? And he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So... Now that they have the idea of understanding after they ate the fruit, their eyes are wide open. And now they realize, uh-oh, we ain't got no clothes on. We need to put some clothes on. We need to do something about this. We need to clothe ourselves. And this is the even more interesting part because we, some people just leave it at, okay, they realize they were naked. But if they're the only humans on earth and they are husband and wife, what 
where are they hiding from? Sin and the act of and the influence of is embarrassing. It's shameful. So again, they had their eyes open from what is good and evil. Because naturally, we know it is evil or it is sinful to not be fully dressed. But that's only around, you know, when we get outside our home because we're in our homes, we're comfortable. We're husband and wife. Why would it be shameful? Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? <laughs> as if God didn't know. I was just telling the story to my children um, in light of what I'm telling you guys based on the fall of man. Because um, my little son had asked, he said, why do we do bad things? Why do we have that desire? And you have to take, go back to the beginning. And can you imagine hearing God? Like, what does that sound like? <laughs> That must be some dramatic walking um, because they heard him and they instantly say, oh, we got to hide ourselves because we don't have any clothes on. Right. Again, knowledge that they only knew because they ate from the fruit that gave them knowledge of good and evil. But God, of course, he got knowing everything. He called to them. Where are you? Adam then answer. He should have answered before. Right. He should have been responsible enough to handle his role before, but he fell short. I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. Being brutally honest, uh, God, I, I knew you was coming. I'm naked. So I didn't want you to see my nakedness. Nakedness equals shame. Shame is sin. Sinful. And he said, who told you that you were naked? <laughs> I want to think that these were talk of questions because God knows all things, right? <laughs> Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? How do we do children? Did you steal that piece of candy? Did you hit your brother? Questions that we most of the time know the answer to, but we need to hear the confession from the person. And that's what God was doing. Confess your sins. What have you done? Then the man doing what men do and what women do, what we do. We want to pick sides. We want to poke blame on someone. And so he says, hey, tuh, it won't me, God. <laughs> <laughs> the woman you put here for me, your fault, turning it back to God. Like you made this woman, you gave her to me. <laughs> she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So if she was my wife, I trust her. She gave me the fruit. I ate it. Blame game, passing the blame. Who was at fault? Was it a serpent? Was it a man? Was it a woman? We have to have the wisdom to understand and know that it was everybody's fault. Everybody played a part in the fall. That's why everybody would be punished. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, a serpent deceived me and I ate it. He did deceive her, but she knew better. We all know better. With all the sins that even now that we are born in and shaped in, we have a sense of knowing of good and evil. We have a lot of people who psychology wise and uh, theology wise want to say that that's not the case, but we, we know all too well that is the case. The fall of man, the first two people who was ever created by God, who created everybody else. We are all born in sin and shape iniquity. We know sin. Then the Lord, okay, it's read that. The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate it. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, first punishment, given out to Satan, the serpent himself, cursed are you above all livestock. And all wild animals, which means he will be the lowest of the low. And naturally he is. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. So a lot of people want to believe that serpents first have legs. I don't know. To me, that little significant part isn't, I don't know. It's not that important to me more so than what took place with the serpent. But we hear here that God says you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust. So we know that snakes are on the ground and they are as low as they go. Come. All the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offsprings and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So how do we kill snakes? We all are taught that we must, we must damage and bruise the head. Otherwise, as a reptile, you cut a, a tail or part of it, it, that part can die off, but they will still be alive. So 
<laughs> anybody you know, know cut snakes we, we aiming for the head right and when snakes aim to get at us where they attack our legs our ankles our feet because that's what they're closest to common sense and to the woman he said i would make your pains and childbearing very severe with painful labor you will give birth to children your desire will be for your husband so we have here in the scripture where, because now before this is the crazy part, Eve, because we all quit to say, look, we blame Eve. It's Eve's fault, which it was. Also the serpent's fault about child childbearing. And we all know, God knows that there is a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort in childbearing and carrying a child. That thing, once you know, you know, it ain't no joke. And I can honestly say that with my daughter, it wasn't as bad. I did have body changes. I did have mood changes, but pain was not that great but with my son everything that could hurt hurt and every time i think about pain and having birth i think about why eve why did you do this to us <laughs> but this was the punishment given down for man so we accept it so there's pain with childbearing pain with labor your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you so once again, this is something that we uh, dug deeper into, like what it means to have desire for your husband. We want to have control over our husband. We want him to understand us. We want us. We want to be able to get in the minds of our husband and understand what men think, how they think, how they act, why they respond. But there's always that barrier there, right? We only know what they tell us, and even what we tell us, we don't know. So. Even myself, I can honestly say that with my husband, oftentimes I'm looking at him like, I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder what he's going to do next. I wonder how he feels. And guess what? We only know what we tell, what he tells us, right? But that's not, we don't know if that to be true. So it's always that, hmm. And we see in generation time that it went from, I want to know what men think like, to I want to act like a man, to I want to be a man. Catch that. And then it says he will rule over us. So we see right here in scripture. Let me move up for you so you can see right there. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. That was in put in place by God. Not man. Man then chose that punishment. God did. So with what God has given us, we are to respect his authority and respect his decision making. We may not like it, but we see in scripture, that's all part of the fall as well. Our desire to overcome this, to rule over this, to be superior over this and be over men and not have to deal with this. This desire will be in us. It's been with us since Eve. He did that. Not man, not nobody writing and messing with the Bible. Because a lot of people look at the other scriptures and say, oh, somebody put that in, somebody took that out. All right, what about this scripture right here that's in all Bibles, all books that are in reference in God? To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I command you, you must not eat from it. He told him, don't eat from it. What did he do? He listened to his wife. He was being disobedient. It was intended for man to be the head from the beginning. He was not acting in order of operations here. You, I told you, I told you what to do. I told you what to say. I told you how to act. I told you what to be doing in this garden. You allow your wife to control that and influence you. You are wrong and you will be punished. Curse is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, meaning that that beautiful scene that you see depicted for the beginning of plants and trees and bushes. Instead of it just being there and God did all the work for him, he said, OK, I did it that one time, but now it's your turn. And guess what? We aren't God, right? So <laughs> work means work. And we have to work. We have to tend to the fields. We have to tend to the animals. And we have this cycle of life that we have to go through to keep everything going and it's very much hard work we know that just to plant a little garden beside your house alone is hard work and dedication it takes time and we have to deal with the thorns and the thistles and the weeds and all that stuff by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food so you will hear the scripture if a man don't work he don't eat and that goes back to right here 
You have to work for what you get, whether get a job and get the money to pay for the means of the stuff. Or if you're a farmer, you have to work on the ground to make sure that everything, like I said, goes in this cycle so that you can eat and so that you can have means to live. Since from it, you were taken. I'm sorry. Until you return to the ground, since from it, you were taken. So now we have to experience death. Death is what came about as a punishment from Adam and Eve. We have to die. And where do we go when we die? People bury us in the ground. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because she will become the mother of all the living. And we can stop right there. But, so whenever you think about, you know, the idea and the conception of feminists and what they stand for and people saying these things were added in the Bible from the Western society because men were dominant, yada, yada, yada. I need you to talk to them and refer them back to Genesis. God designed this order, not man. Man didn't have any say so. Did you see one time where Adam opened up his mouth and said this, 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 and this? This is God talking. God was putting in destructions. So it is God that says man is over woman. Period. So that concludes our first woman to woman. Hopefully you guys learned something. Um, comment below how you feel about everything that I said. Um, I would love to know your thoughts and opinions. We can't argue the word. That's for sure. I read it to you. I explained it to you. If you have any questions, concerns, please comment down below. Do not pollute. Keep it cute. I love you guys. God bless. Thank you for tuning in on today. Take care. Bye.